Today's sponsor of the Vision Quest podcast is 920 Hat Company. Leather patch hats are in, and 920 Hat Company is here to hook you up with your very own custom hat. All patches are lasered on top grade genuine leather and on popular brand hats like Richardson and FlexFit. Whether you're looking to show off your business or want a one-of-a-kind hat for yourself, 920 Hat Company can do it all. All the hats are handcrafted right in the Fox Valley, but worn across America. With over 500 hats in stock, they guarantee fast turnaround times. Honestly, Liam, you know, looking at these hats, solid, right? Yeah, they're pretty, I like them. I like that patch, that patch itself. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of a kind stuff. Uh, I know his name is Trevor. Uh, he does great work. He's actually gotten what? I think we got some a knit hat coming. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got that coming. So uh, we're really excited to have these guys on board as a sponsor. So uh, get uh, get down to check them out on Facebook. I believe they're on Instagram. Uh, check them out, man. They got the best hats, I think, in the Fox Valley, if not in the state. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, get down to 920 Hat Company on social media and check them out. And we're live. We are live. We are joined today with the one and only. Uh, I met you a while back, and dude, it was awesome to run into you at that camp. It was it was fantastic. Um, we are with four time Michigan State champ. Uh, you're Central Michigan alum. You started at Nebraska, but you have probably one of the most storied careers in Michigan high school wrestling history. Um, we are joined by Kyle Waldo. Thank you very much for joining us. Head coach also <laughs> Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Um, second year, you said, right? Second year? Yeah, year two. Year all right, two. all right. Well, and we were just talking before, you've already produced, what, a state champ, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. first year, we had a state nice. champ right off the kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dale nice. Gant. He was a 113 pound Okay. State champion, so nice. Pretty tough, right. right out the gate. So, what, I'm what was him, what man. was one of the weight classes that you wrestled at that you were state champion? Was it 113? 106 or 103, 103, 112, and then 119. 112. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Just, just man, you were because I watched a couple of the videos, some of the interviews and stuff of you just back in the day, and then like comparing it now, I was like, man, you were tidy. <laughs> No, I was so small. And you were a little we'll, guy. We'll go through it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, that's been the story of my life. Just I was always <laughs> like I'm the guy that's got to get us going. Like yeah. usually back in the right day on. before they drew weight classes, it was we were just starting at 103, which I yeah. loved it. You no, know, which kind of, well, sometimes it sucked, but <laughs> rather just walk into it, but. What, um, anyway. so we, like I said, you know, we tell everybody, we, we start from the beginning and we, and we go to now where you're at now. So let's talk about where you were born. What, what city were you born in? Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
right in okay yeah. right where you're at you're full yeah. circle all right oh, okay yeah. so now now you're back where you came from let's talk about the journey from uh from the beginning where what kind of things do you remember what was your first memory of like sport or any kind of thing that got you into athletics what was the first thing you remember my dad playing softball so okay I, the earliest memories i have are my dad bringing me to softball tournaments and i would sit with the wives yeah remember just watching him play but very intense okay very intense like he was playing at a really high level playing for state and the worlds and stuff and oh wow those guys okay. were very serious about it and then, yeah. you know, but at the time growing up, um, my mom wasn't around. So okay. it was just me and my dad. It was you and your dad. And okay. Yeah, that was it. And I lived in my grandma's trailer for the most part with her. And then my okay. dad was working a few jobs trying to Damn. trying to get us out of there, you know, like okay. trying to figure something out. Right. Um, but the earliest thing I have of sports, like me doing anything, was we yeah. were living with two of his buddies. Um kind of on the northeast side of Grand Rapids. Yeah. And I remember in the backyard, my dad teaching me how to hit a baseball. Oh, really? Because, you know, he's a softball player. And I was yeah. good at I could throw, I could hit. And I remember yeah. playing t-ball at John Ball Park Zoo. Yeah. So, and it's just right away, my dad could tell, like, I'm super competitive. I yeah. like to okay. lose at all. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, my dad met my stepmom when I was like four, probably. And she was around and okay. I'm still living in the trailer. And yeah. My dad was like, hey, we're getting married. And I'm like, I don't know if that means, but, you right. know, cool. cool. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> awesome. I like her. So we're right. fine. That's, that's cool. fine. Then we end up moving to Granville. And then first year of school, sure enough, uh, too small to play football. Yeah. In Granville, you had to be a certain weight. And in first grade, <clears throat> I was like 40 pounds. 41. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was very, very yeah. small. You but were small. I did way the lowest weight class in wrestling so when i brought this flyer home it was yeah. in my cubby you yeah. know you bring if you put in your backpack but that's oh yeah it. he's like yeah hey what about this wrestling thing my dad knows nothing about wrestling he's never wrestled knows nothing about it he's like it says here you can win a medal and i'm like Fine. really yeah. he's like, well, you got to go to practice you know they have a tournament granville hosted their own tournament so it was all freestyle okay. there was no folk style not it was oh. all freestyle Interesting. There was, there was no such thing as folk style. Folk style was in Flint. And we'll get wow. to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll right. That. That's interesting. But okay. we didn't know anything about it. So we just freestyle. I remember just learning grab a wrist, open it up, double leg, drive them down. That's all I knew. We did it for like four practices straight. And yeah. I remember thinking in my head, just run your feet. Just run your yeah. feet. I took second out of three, I think, in the first tournament. And I was, it was over. I got a you medal around it. my neck, went to Chuck E. Cheese. Not even kidding. We went to Chuck E. Cheese. I had my medal around my neck, went to sleep with it, and dude, the rest is history. Like, I don't Holy. remember a whole lot from that. Yeah. But I remember that. Like, that was Holy like, cow. okay. Like, but I that's can a good one. That's a catalyst. You know, I mean, oh, that, yeah. that is right there, like the epitome of uh, on fire. I mean, Liam was kind of the same way. I mean, the first tournament he went to, he got his butt kicked in the first match. Uh, <laughs> he was kind of close in the second match. The third match, he won by a point, and he was hooked. You know, he yeah. won that one match. It was just that feeling of winning, and plus, you did it on your own, like yeah. it was your result. And he's just like, "I did, I did that, I did that." So, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so that's 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 pretty key, a key moment. So when you started yeah. kind of your journey into wrestling, then what you're talking about only freestyle? How mm-hmm. how was it then around um, like middle school? Did you start wrestling for school in middle school? When did folk style pop in? Well, I would say, I don't really remember. I know it was like a couple of years in. Yeah. So I think I was nine. Well, okay. we'll back it up a little bit. Yeah. So wrestling was very much my dad and my thing. Okay. It wasn't yep. just my thing. And yeah. I will always say that because yeah. he was so great to me. It yep. just felt like this was our thing. Like, yep. I win, you win. I lose. <laughs> I could definitely sure. tell you lost too. <laughs> like, right? Yeah, so you can feel it. Yeah. My dad was really good at just playing the social game and getting me where I needed to get to. Okay. And Ben Bennett, you know who that is? That sounds familiar. Yes. Yes. Ben, yep. He's a head assistant at Central Michigan right now. Okay. Four-time yep. All-American, three-time state champ. Well, his yep. dad and my dad talked. And he's like, hey, you ought to just come train with us in Rockford. And so That's instead right. of going to club practice, I would yeah. go train with Ben in Rockford. Well, we we're like, man, we got to find some competition on the other side of the state. Well, this is a thing called folk style. 
and MMWA runs it in Flint. It's a hell yeah. of a drive, but if oh. we wake up early enough, the weigh-ins yeah. are on site morning of. So if we leave at 5, 4.30, 5 a.m., yeah. we can make it there, weigh in. Wow. So we were just doing that and doing freestyle in the spring. So we didn't really, I didn't really know the difference. All I knew was I could lock my hands in one and the other one I really couldn't. I wrestled I, good. just like folks. I hit switches, stand-ups, like. No kidding. I just wrestled folks out. Like, I didn't, Holy cow. My dad's too stupid to know. Like, he didn't know. <laughs> He didn't know. God bless his heart. If you're listening to this, dad, you just didn't know. It's fine. I'm, how do they, it's like fun. you said, with the stuff that, <laughs> yeah, no that way. he had going on, he played, you know, softball. He was an athletic dude, but like that sport, it's the same thing with me. Like now Liam's to a point now where it doesn't matter if it's freestyler folks out beyond me. Like, right. It's yeah. that's you know, about sports, but to know that much about it after a while, you're just like, all right, Jesus, take the wheel. And I'm okay. sure you're just trying to put him in the best position. That's it. Possible. That's, and that's it. it. Yep. And like Based on you try to, at that. yeah, that's you try to surround that. yourself with the right people and talk to the right people. And hopefully you make that right decision. And it sounds like he was a supportive guy because it wasn't like he was questioning whether or not we should do this. Like it's, it feels like he was all in with you when you decided to be all in on this, you know, and, yeah. and went with you, you know, it's, it doesn't sound like it was easy, you know, like you guys probably had to figure out ways to make things happen. And we totally get that. But it just seems like he had, he saw your vision and was just trying to, you know, kind of follow up with you. And that's what we kind of focus on a lot too, is like the support system that you have, mm -hmm. not, not having mom around, but dad was that guiding force of what you were doing. So, so wh where did you, where did you, it's just a unique situation, really only being exposed to freestyle first, which is great, you know, but at the same point though, too, now, did you feel like you guys had to play catch up? You had some really great guys to obviously learn from, but having only freestyle, did you feel like you had to play catch up when it came to wrestling school, you know, school wrestling, or did you kind of have a handle on that by the time you got into it? That's the thing though. We didn't, we were not taught freestyle. We were taught folk style okay. from our coach and just wrestle freestyle tournaments. Okay. okay. So like we okay. knew the rules Holy. and like we knew, we knew a gut wrench and I knew yeah. what leg lace was and I knew how to defend it. But in our minds, it was not any different. Like, oh my I'm, God. Okay. Like, okay. Well, we, and then obviously when Dave Dean went and brought folks out, out of Flint, yeah, there was yeah. great when I entered middle school. So okay. seventh grade okay. is when okay. it finally came out. So we were just traveling, but my dad met Logan Steber's dad in our okay. tournament in Ohio. Yeah. And that's how we got hooked up with the Taylor and Steber and Palmer. Yeah. All those guys who went down yep. to Jeff Jordan. Because yep. in reality, man, in Michigan, there wasn't anything really. Like yeah. my our coach was Ben's uncle, Tom Bennett, and his dad. Doug Bennett. Tom won a state championship in Indiana. I wrestled for John Carroll. Okay. So like he he was he was in there. But yeah. Very quickly, we surpassed that, and we needed okay. something else. So wow. Three times a year, we'd go to Jeff Jordan's camp to go wrestle with Steve, uh, Taylor and Steber. Yeah. And all the it was just an wow. insane camp. It was insane every single year. Yeah. But then I would come back and just test myself, and then go back to camp you know, get a little better, go back, yep. test myself. And then Eric Jurgens and Young Guns. Oh, yeah. They, yep. they started in Michigan, an hour from my house. Really? So when they came, everyone went there. And yeah. that's when, I think that's when everyone in our area just, just took skyrocketed. Off. Just took off. <laughs> it's unreal. And then we kind of all came back together when they left Michigan and the rest is yeah. history, really. So. Yeah, it well, and that kind of it's kind of goes to say the same thing with like uh, Ben and Max when those guys open up Askren here, like Wisconsin has skyrocketed in, in in ability and knowing like you you so you were already surrounded by some really great dudes. Your dad was making some some good moves to get you around some decent guys. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, exactly. Smart, well, and, and whatever he was doing with with like his sports with you know softball, I mean the level he was playing at, obviously he knows that there are angles that you got to do and make to be able to be the best. Right. Yeah. So he found the best obviously, and you yeah. got involved with the best. So what was, what was training? Like when you were, <laughs> when you started wrestling in folk style and for, let's, did you wrestle like freestyle tournaments? Did you, did you guys go to, cause we talk a lot about like in my area where there wasn't a lot to go to, right. We, we didn't have, mm -hmm. I think my brother, he was seven years, seven years older than I was. And I remember those guys going to Iowa once every year. And I think that was a freestyle tournament. It wasn't even a folk style tournament. Mm -hmm. And that was back in like 90, you know, like 90, yep. 91. 
where did you guys did you guys wind up traveling a lot right away for any tournaments mm-hmm. because he knew that you needed to get good competition kind of thing or what was that um, like for you <clears throat> uh, we didn't really travel until i was in like sixth grade okay okay makes and sense i think i don't know and and his i think i'm sure in his mind too it was kind of like we were he was still navigating what we needed to do i'm sure yeah but it took that long for me okay. to like get good okay okay so, so it was a progression yeah oh yeah i hadn't won yeah. state like every year i was getting beat in state i hadn't won a state title yet yeah like okay you know i had the same damn kid would beat me every single time at both styles he'd beat me and everything right but in fifth grade i think that's when i met really really got connected with the stevers when i was like nine okay wow and then i just took off yeah and after that they were like hey i think by talking with them yeah we had the blueprint for what we needed to do okay so that's when tulsa came in that's when oh. kickoff came in that's when Liberty Nationals came in. Okay. Dual meet tournaments. And then I was old enough to be on the Michigan dual meet team, which there was yeah. like one. There was one in the state of Michigan. John Reeder. I mean, everyone. Cam Simons. All, yeah. We had a, Justin Zero. We had everyone. Wow. So in sixth grade, I was old enough to be on that team. So we did middle school duels. Yeah. VA Beach. All that stuff the kids do nowadays. Yeah. We did kickoff classic, Tulsa, Russell Freestyle. That was it. Holy and like, cow. I started in sixth grade because my dad – learned of these tournaments and all of a sudden it's like oh so this is what we're supposed to be doing yeah we'll try it we'll try it and then i did decent we're like well we gotta keep yep. coming back here you yep. just one and two we're coming back <laughs> yeah you're right right the whole purpose is that to see you know the next you gotta did you progress getting to the next one so it's yep. interesting see he he instantly saw so your dad instantly saw the progress that you need to make and who you need to keep yeah. up with and so talking about the tulsas and things like that now Obviously, you were. It sounded like right from the get go, you were. Your dad had in mind of more the quality than the quantity type mm-hmm. factor. Where your oh, training, yeah. your training seemed to be quality as well. Where you had time to train, but then okay, we're going to train for this. Did you find yourself like because you were hooked up with Stevers and and so many other names? Did you find yourself training for a tournament like early, kind of doing those types of? Um, uh, I guess quadranium is a little a little much. It's four years, but getting ready yeah. for a, like a Tulsa. Hey, we're going to prep for this. When did you start kind of, cause we don't talk about that a lot. Cause I don't know a lot about it. How to peak. Did you mm-hmm. learn that from those guys when it came to training for even as a young guy, when it came to training or getting ready for a Tulsa, what was, did you guys throw any of that into the mix of training? I am sure it might've been more in depth than I realized. Sure. If sure. That makes yeah. sense, Cause I was young, but it seemed like we had a couple weeks between tournaments all the time. Okay. But okay. That was the thing is like, I would go to, cause my way in middle school came into West Michigan and I okay. remember going to the state finals. I wrestled like a minute and 20 seconds total the whole day. Wow. And like, I'd go to the freestyle state. I would tech fall everyone in the first period. It was just like, this Holy is cow. pointless. This okay. is pointless. But th- because nobody really had the opportunity to yeah. go do what we were doing. Sure. And like, I'll say yeah. it. I'll say it right now. We were the front runners that started this whole damn thing. I know yep. Metcalf was at kickoff and like reader. Yep. So like we had seen those guys do it, but there was nobody going to Tulsa at the time right. when right. Ben Bennett and I went, yep. I think there was only a couple other guys from Michigan. No kidding. Holy but like cow. we're, and th- that we knew of course, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that we knew of. And it's obviously we didn't have uh internet on the cell phones and track wrestling right. back then. So <laughs> it's like who we saw from Michigan, but it's like, I just feel like we were ahead of the game. Like it I just sounds don't, like I, it. Everyone was wrestling in state, but for dual meet teams, how the hell are they supposed to even get into this tournament? We're the right. only Michigan team there wrestling right. Keaton Jordan and all these guys. So like, if you're good, you're on our team and we're just blasting off. Wow. And you guys are just all down there. So that's why I, like when I got my freshman year in high school, it wasn't a question about whether I was going to win four. Like, so, of course right. I'm going to like in my mind, like, yeah. I've been watching you guys wrestle. This is nothing. Right. At least in my mind. And then you get there and it's a little different. It's a little different, right? <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> the cockiness disappears very quickly. <laughs> right, right, right. So when yeah. you're when you're see, I just can't believe it. it's amazing <laughs> that you guys were able to be able to just kind of take it from the beginning like that and and kind of run with it. Especially again, it proves that having those D one level guys around to share those ex the expertise and the experiences that they had. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, because they were they were dealing with world level guys then at that point though too, because that's where they were at, you know. So now bringing yeah. that, we didn't we were missing that for a long time in Wisconsin. I mean, now we have all these guys coming back, you know, like uh, uh, you got Kaczynski or um, uh, Coach Nazar. Um, he got mm-hmm. you have uh, you know Askren and these guys, but it, it, there's a lot more. There's a lot more, even like the D three guys that are coming back and sharing that knowledge. And and making it such a better you know, environment as far as wrestling and technique. When you guys started to explode like that, where were you? How how you were, you were going to Tulsa? You know the tournaments like that. But what were you doing for training? So oh. because that that talent was so far spread, was it just because you guys had that group of guys that that you trained with that came up with that, or were you finding yourself having to travel to train? Um. Well, this is where I, early on, like when Ben and I were training together, yeah, we were the same size. Yep. So I guess if we back it up a little bit before Tulsa, yep. I would say the year after we went to Tulsa for the first time, around nine ish, yeah, Ben gained a bunch of weight, started okay. hitting puberty, yeah, and I didn't hit puberty until I was fifteen. So it's like, yeah, oh, uh, what pressure. are we gonna do? Yeah. So Ben brought in a couple guys. I oh, brought okay. in a couple guys into our room in Rockford yeah. in his basement, and we started a wrestling club, Michigan Extreme. Okay, okay. So that's where Extreme came from. Yeah. And then eventually we're like, well, hell, people are just wondering what we're doing because we're going to tournaments and just thumping dudes. Right. And our guys are training with are thumping people. <laughs> so people want to come and train, and then he started a, our club, and we had by far the best wrestling club in the state of Michigan and one of the best in the country for sure. I sure. I remember hearing that name, you know, quite a bit just reiterated at tournaments and things like that. So it's, <clears> it's <throat> interesting that you guys had to, you really had to create your own thing. You guys had to yeah. make something to make, you know, whatever you wanted to keep continue. So with that, the being training, said, yeah. what's that? Go the ahead. training itself was just insane. I guess what? Oh, if you want to talk right. about the actual training. Yeah. yeah. So in general, we plan on being there. I know in my head it was two to three hours. Okay. Okay. Wow. And okay. we don't know where we're going to land in there. And there right. have been a ton of times where the power was out. So they'd open all the doors. Guys would pull up their trucks, flash their high beams. Wow. And we'd go. Like, we're going to get it in You're no matter what. Right. And the parents were just a bunch of psychopaths too. So, like, they're going to be there, you know, and they're all friends. They're all really good friends. That's but awesome, though. It was a ton, a ton of exercising right just getting our bodies ready to go which is so smart because they knew that we were going and getting the technique that we needed in the summer right. most of us would travel we'd go learn from the best perler the jordans like we'd yeah. go learn and then when we come back in the fall it's like does he really want to mess with that or does he just need to put us through a workout and make sure we get our reps in get our yeah. live in and then yeah. he said the conditioning wow. ben's that ben's dad said we would condition until everyone broke and he said a lot of times we would just go and go yeah. and go and go and go until so, until the majority of the room was done. And sometimes it would take three hours. Sometimes it would take two hours. Wow. Whatever wow. we needed. But so, a little different. Not, <laughs> is, is, I was going to say, a that is a lot, a lot of the stories you hear. You know, it's not, it was that one person or he had a partner that was kind of grind. You had like a whole group and then turned it into a club of guys that were just wanting to grind the piss out of each other. So knowing, knowing what you guys have put yourselves through, what were you guys are dealing with injuries? I mean, things like that, just grinding that much. You guys weren't really coming up. You're just strengthening yourselves so much just by just the, there was injuries, but sure. sure. If you you don't have to go to the hospital, yeah, you better get your shoes on Billy. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) You better stay in there, big dog. I remember my head going through drywall one time. I wrestled with wow. Riley Ewalt, yeah, who um, was the Tulsa national champ. He was really good. Yeah, um, he said I remember hitting a double leg on him, and he yeah. just took my head right through the drywall, and I pulled my head out, and I was crying. I mean, but I walked outside and goes, "You done?" Yeah, and I'm like no, and he <laughs> just went right back inside. Like, oh, holy shit! And that was the expectation, though. Like, oh, you think yeah. you're tougher than me? Yeah. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. Well, 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 well adjusted room. I mean, obviously you guys yeah. are willing to take it. I mean, you guys are willing yeah. to, to battle with and for each other. It sounds like we loved each other too. Which that's huge. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it sounds like you guys had a pretty tight, um, Nick group where in that it's, it's funny you mentioned that because it's kind of how my brother's group was. I was again, my wrestling days 
weren't as, as, as long as his and as good as his. So those guys actually were able to form that type of bond and watching those guys go to those tournaments together, you know, local and things like that in the off season was really cool. And seeing that you guys had that, it was just a, another level of just pounding the pants of each yeah, other and it, and it made fun. you better and it made you tighter. Um, Super fun too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so when fun. you guys, when you guys would go to, would you guys then as that, as like a club, you would go to these tournaments, dual tournaments or whatnot, what were you guys kind of, you know, where, what was your rival? What was your rival going to some of these tournaments that you guys would go to? Cause I would imagine there were only so many different types of clubs that were out there, right. That were yeah. kind of Harvey twisters. Oh yeah. There you go. You're out of Illinois. Right. For me. Yeah. BJ yeah. for trial. You know who that is? <laughs> yep. Sure do. Yeah. So me and BJ, I got a story for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a good ending for me, but oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, one year I just put in a ton of time. I think I was like 12. I put in so much time and I just seventh grade. Yeah. So I was 12. Yeah. I just really hit a different level. I thought that summer. So kickoff classic, my dad always said, if I had one kickoff, you yeah. win Tulsa, I'll take it to Reno. And I was like, okay. I really want to go to Reno this year. Really bad. Right. Cause they had the giant globe that the yeah. guy would hold at the time. I wanted one so bad. I was like, all right, <laughs> well, Logan, Steve going in the weight class below me. Yep. Taylor is the weight class above me and Palmer is a couple weight classes above us. Yeah. Like this is my year. Like no one's standing in my way. I I fit in perfect, like right at 67 pounds. Like I fit in perfect. So yeah. I'm like, all right. So I'm wrestling BJ Futrell in the semis at the kickoff classic. <clears throat> yep. I'm whooping him. I'm up. I think I was up five to one. Yeah. And with like 30 seconds left. And what I was thinking. Oh, no, I think I just making me, I'm blushing hard. So in my mind, in my mind, for some reason, I'm like, I'm about to turn it up on this dude. So I like cut him with, with 30 seconds left. I cut him Yeah. and he turned yeah. around and he starts hitting the Ali shuffle on me. Oh. I, I'm not, I'm not making this up at all. He went <laughs> with his feet and I just dove in on a double leg, got in, he falls to his butt. I, and I'm looking over, yeah. I'm looking at the scoreboard yep. and I see the scoreboard say nine, eight and i look yep. down and i see taylor and steber like super pumped for me because i finally yeah. broke through you know i've been yep, training yep. for so long oh, no. he crotch lifts me and then on the way through shifts and catches me in a cradle with four seconds left oh no so so i'm up my three right yeah he gets two takedown and right at the buzzer he got the second swipe for a two near fall and beat me no five, four, six five i was like and then i look over at the scoreboard again and I see everyone, behind, everyone behind the scoreboard like this, like that. And I was like, oh man, like, and I look over at my dad. My dad's like, are you, he goes, he mouth, he goes, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. He's like, well, you got to wrestle. I had to turn around and wrestle. I took third, but yeah, man, that was my shot. And then he beat the piss out of me at Tulsa in January. We wrestled like <laughs> second round somehow. Oh, really? Like, I don't know how I yeah. got didn't even get seated and I had to wrestle him. And then I turned around and wrestled, I think Lester who ended up going to Oklahoma. Yeah. And he just like, <laughs> what are you supposed to do, man? I thought I was going to beat him. No, it didn't work Dude, out. Dude, so close. So yeah, close. But BJ will live rent free in my head for the rest of his, my life though. Way to go sure. BJ. Yeah. Thanks, I know. <laughs> Thanks dude. He's a good dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, he's, he's, he's a good guy. Um, so we, I mean that, dude that's a that's a tail and a half of a of a match right there so yeah. was that that was you said seventh grade year eighth grade let's start talking about kind of climbing into high school a little bit what were you weighing in eighth grade um 80 pounds depends on when so i'll in seventh grade my first year in seventh grade i weighed yeah. 68 pounds seven 67 holy this and then in eighth grade i would have been in eighth grade but the mhsa told me Cause we had ran it through them that if my dad tries to hold me back in eighth grade, mm-hmm. they might take a year of my eligibility. But my dad's like, how can you do that? Like, I, That's and, I wasn't, and I wasn't, but my dad was like, he's struggling socially. Like, cause he's yeah, small, right. blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah. I'm holding him back. We've been training it. way too much time. So they held me back. And it wasn't until eighth grade. The big start of eighth grade is when I was yeah. like 78 pounds. Wow. And then I was about 85 by the end of the school year. I was not, and far then off. I hit, and then I hit puberty, like oh. right before high school. Like, okay, I would say June, and then I was one oh one ish. Okay, 
okay. my freshman year. And yeah. then after a workout, I'd be like 98. But sure, sure. I was right in there. Wow. But, and we knew that going in. And I remember my coaches, Craig Chudich was my coach. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, like, nobody can keep up, keep up with me. Like, mm-hmm. I go to these camps, and Taylor and Steve were already in high school because yep. they were a little bit ahead of me. Yep. And they were having so much success. And I was right with them. So I'm like, I think if I just wrestle hard, like, I have something to prove. Yeah. I'm not going to go out there and expect to win because right. I thought I was the man. But then I'm like, man, I'm really small. Like, sure. I think I went 50 and one my yeah, freshman you, year. So you did the numbers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know what the deal was. Like, I was yep. going to go out there and prove I'm a bad dude. Right. Like you're not going to do anything about it. And it's, which is weird, but so in my mind, I wasn't very confident, but did you have, <laughs> did you have, did you have experience against high school guys before you got into high school? No, you guys didn't do that. Wrestle up a, a you know, nope. just a grade or something like that. So, or, I mean, how am I going to wrestle up? Cause I'm one of three in a weight class, right? Very true. So it was actually not in my best interest to go and wrestle some of these guys when I'm so small. Sure. It's so small. Makes sense. And at the time, I was kind of hiding. Like, I didn't sure. wrestle any tournaments in Michigan at all for like <laughs> a well over a year. So oh, I just really? wrestled middle school duels, Tulsa's. We were just okay. training, just in the okay. dungeon, just getting sure. ready. Getting ready for well, high school. And yeah, they won't be ready when it's time, is kind of what we thought. So, so let's talk <laughs> about your first match then in high school. What was, what did that feel like? I mean, going, jumping that level, was that a different feel of just grabbing onto a guy and how he grabbed you? And what was that experience for you that first time? Yeah, well, there's a lot, there was a lot of emotion there. My dad yeah. had kidney stones that morning. And oh, man. He had to get in the ambulance because he, he, he ran. Oh. Let me say he ran outside to the ambulance. When they got oh, wow. Because he was cow. passing a kidney stone. So, oh, like, my Jesus. dad wasn't there my first high school match. And this kid sucked. Like, sure. I knew it. I walked sure. out there and I'm thinking, this well, shouldn't be bad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But all of a sudden, this is what I'm saying. Like, I changed when high school wrestling started. And I okay. noticed it immediately because I okay. went out there and I'm like, I don't have any confidence. Yeah, yeah. And I told my dad that. I was That's like, crazy. I don't, okay. I don't, I was like, I just don't know. I like, I'm scared. Yeah. So I would go out there and wrestle and I pinned the kid, I think. I walked off and I went, Whoa, I'm not the man. Like that kid was stronger than me and he was fast. Yeah. And like, I'm way faster than him, obviously, but that worried me. Like that kid sucks that bad. Okay. And I struggled a little bit, but that See. immediately I was like, Okay, I've got to go a hundred mile an hour. Like yeah. I have to go really hard. And then after the first tournament, I was like, man, like I've got to step it up. So Even your like perception right away was great. I mean, you knew just to, as far as the, just that first guy or even, yeah, I pinned him, but that was weird. That didn't feel right. Yeah. So you got, you got a little anxious. I mean, so wh- where did you kind of turn? Did you talk to your dad? Was it a kind of coaches that you kind of reached out to? What what kind of things were you going through? Just, just inside you dealt with it and you told yourself, I got to go hundred miles an hour. But yeah. I mean, you just dealt with it on your own. Yeah, I'm I'm an only child too. Okay. So okay, and like obviously you heard some of my story growing up, but yeah. like yeah. I never had help getting through things. Okay. Like okay, when I'm sick, do you think someone's there to like make right. me feel better growing up? No, dude. Like right, my dad's got shit to deal with. You better deal with your shit too. Like so yeah. in high school when I felt like that, like this is. My dad and my thing, but I wanted it so bad. Right, right. So, so bad. I was yeah. so obsessed. So what I did was go home and watch my video immediately. What did I do right? First of all, yep. what did I do right? Yep. Like where And how did I get to those positions? And what else is possible from that too? Okay. And then I would go back and rewatch it and go, Damn. I didn't like that. Didn't like that. But I'm going to give myself credit first because I knew where my head was at. Okay. So I'm like, don't beat yourself up when you watch this. Let's just see what you did good. And like, yeah, make yeah. myself feel good. And then I go back and watch you be like, all right, well, I can work on that. And I can yeah. Work on that. So, You're just doing the math. You weren't putting any emotion. Yeah. Obsessively watching, though. Yeah. You know, like. But, dude, it. look where it got you. I mean. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was never the strongest guy ever. Right. But I guarantee you, I know myself better than you do know yourself. Sure. Like I know myself really well. I know well, where I'm really good and I know where I'm not and I'm going to get there. And just so. kind of listening to how you, you know, you treated things right away. I mean, if you're able to dig down, yeah, for sure. You're going to definitely have some stories to talk to yourself about and be like, Hey, 
you know, you and I need to do this and we need to get it done. You know, this is it. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. That's and especially from such a young age to be able to have that. And I get, you know, I get the, the having to deal with, you know, only having one parent and then plus, you know, it's not that you're, it doesn't sound like, you know, your dad is, is kind of, you know, gruff, but he was telling you, he's making, making you understand you need to do this. Like, you know, it's you're going to have to, right. You're going to have to someday be able to deal with this to be able to make it out. So yeah. I think it's, it just shows the resilience, you know, number one, that you had to be able to kind of deal with things on your own, but also your dad was, was smart enough to know that, Hey, this is going to toughen them up. I, you know, I've got no other choice, but to do it, you know, this way with him and it works. It's just like Carrie Cole out yeah. with his dad may not have worked with another kid, but guess what? I worked with him. I wouldn't want it. Any, you know, right. Exactly. I wouldn't <laughs> want it any other way, but I wouldn't want anybody else to go through it kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So, I can't imagine my dad doing anything different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we, and we love those guys for it. Right. That's, that's the whole deal is kind of looking back. I mean, what you, 20, hindsight's 2020, 20, right. You can always predict right. things perfectly once you get past them, but the, the, the things that you went through in life built a character, you know, inside you that, that said you need to keep fighting and keep battling through things. When you got into some of these tight where, I mean, where some of these championship matches that you had at state, like, you're like, holy, holy shit. I almost, I could have lost that right there. I, I didn't go back and watch every single one of them. So where did you have any kind of state matches where you really had to kind of dig in and like, Oh, I didn't realize this guy was going to be like this. Um, my, I would say I had two matches that were okay. like that. Okay. Two. And I'm, yep. I just did a catalog of every match in my head. My right. freshman year, <laughs> I barely won in the state finals, but I had, I was very, very sick. Okay. And okay. If I wrestled that match a hundred times. I'm going to tech fall him. You're right. 90. Yeah. So <clears throat> it was crap. But my junior year, <clears throat> sorry, my junior yeah. year, I bumped from 103 to 112. Mm-hmm. Spent all summer lifting and trying to get bigger and get ready for it. But the year before, the kid that made the state finals, he's going 112 again. Um, okay. He's a big, strong, hairy dude. Like, yeah, yeah. well, in, way in his puberty. And I'm kind of on the front of it. Yep, and I didn't really put on the size that I needed to. I was like one eighteen. Okay, okay. But again, that summer though, I had mm-hmm. spent a lot of time in Ohio, just a ton of time down there training, getting yep. ready to go. And <laughs> sure enough, <clears throat> I went to Dinsey Duels. We didn't like. I think, and I'll be honest, like, I think I was scared at t- some level. Okay. To test myself, like at Fargo. Cause yeah. I haven't wrestled freestyle in so long. And I figured it in my own head, like if I just won four state titles, like why would you not recruit me? Like right. I didn't understand that Michigan, I was just pigeonholing myself into doing this one thing Yeah, <clears throat> and I didn't get out. But anyways, as we're going, I figured there's one kid I'm going to have to wrestle. His name was Justin Fleason. So in the okay. quarterfinals, somehow, somehow he loses at regionals. And I know that that regional, the second place guy is going to get put on my side. Okay. And I beat my teammate one to zero at districts in triple overtime. Holy cow. I beat him one to zero at regionals. And I, that sat out the whole year with a knee injury. So I didn't, I didn't start wrestling until the conference tournament. Week oh, okay. Districts. Okay. So okay. I had eight matches. Yeah. Going into yep. districts. Right. Way out of shape. Yep. But this one kid, I just knew and I saw, I walk, I get online he took second. I'm like, oh. like, how did you lose? Like, of course, man. Like, yeah, now yeah, he's yeah. on my side, and we had a war, and I beat him seven to five. Wow. Like, wait in the last 30 seconds. I hit him in a sweep single and took him down and rolled him out and beat him, and we were oh, tied man. up. So it was a good match. And yeah. then my senior year in the state finals, I wrestled a kid named Grant Pizzo from Brighton. Okay. And that was a war. He was in on my legs like four times, and I scored yeah. twice off a of scramble, I think. Oh wow, man! It was a war. I, know, those were the only two, though. That yeah, the rest of them were just—I don't know. I don't really remember. So, so talking so. about the record, like it was one sixty-seven and five, right? So the the five losses that you had, you had, you said you got one your freshman year. Um, yeah. What what loss was that? Was that an in-state loss? So <laughs> that loss was in the team state quarterfinals to Davison. Oh, ooh. Okay. And like Roy Hall's talked about this on a Michigan Grappler podcast. This is his yeah. favorite dual meet win of all time. But yeah, they 
the because there was two weigh-ins at state. So we it was in the semis we lost. Sorry, we won our okay. quarterfinal match, and then you had to weigh in and wrestle again the next day. They yep. dropped down like eight guys in their team of one weight class out of nowhere. They went to Ohio and made scratch weight, and we didn't know about it. So Whoa. JJ, we didn't know. So all of a sudden, I'm looking over at this kid that I used to go to war with in elementary school, and yeah. he looks sickly. And yeah. I'm like, he must yeah. be cutting some weight. I'm like, what That's the hell? On. And we're in, I was like, I was like, am I in line for 103? And I'm like looking yeah. up, and sure enough, he gets in line right in front of me. And I look at Roy Hall, and Roy Hall looks at me, and I'm like, holy shit. I was like, they're dropping everyone down. And wow. I'm looking at my other teammates, and they're all looking at each other, and like we, we lost the duel right there. It was a wow. Right there. No kidding. And I went out, and we were doing really good, and then yeah. I got beat 13 to zero. Just got – he threw the legs in on me and just guillotined me over and yeah. over and over. And I was wow. just – they had to pretty much peel me off the mat after that one. Ouch. And then a bunch of our guys lost that shouldn't have lost. All because of that, all because that weight shift. It <laughs> wasn't me, at least, that messed with me because yeah. I knew him. Yeah. I grew up wrestling on teams with him. Right. He was right. My boy. Yeah. But I knew that in the practice room, it was always really wow. close. And he, crazy. I, I didn't know how good he was on top. So <laughs> when it went down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when, what was your sophomore year? Did you have any losses your sophomore year? Um, I had one. Dude, okay, Jamie one. Clark, Jamie Clark and Saint Anne's. Okay, and he just beat David Taylor a week before that. So yeah, he I think he beat Steber, Taylor, and me that season. I'm pretty. Oh sure. my god, I think wow. so. I don't know if he beat Logan or not. I'm okay. not sure actually. I know he beat David right before that, but he tech followed me in the second period. I think. So you're you're yeah. putting the string of wins together and a couple of pretty decent seasons. Now you get into your junior year, you starting to get news from colleges, things like that starting to kind of float in. Really? No radio silence. No, nothing. You're, you're nothing. Start of your end of your sophomore year. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, because my grades weren't amazing. My sophomore year, I cut from an obscene amount of weight to get to one Oh three. And I'm not making excuses for myself, but sure. Yeah. I just didn't take care of business. It's part of the story. Be. Right. So I went from super high freshman year to yeah. low and my GPA sat somewhere in the middle. Okay. And at the time too, and I got hurt my junior year. I, was, I didn't wrestle like at all. Okay. And okay. That's like right. I yep. barely was there. So it's like, I, don't yeah. know, I wasn't the greatest pro- and I hadn't wrestled at any national tournaments really. So I okay. just was in the state finals and went to camps and trained all summer. So like my stuff, like okay. I didn't see all of these things until sure. after my junior year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked right. back on it, and I'm going, "Oh, we figured it out." So I went to Fargo, took seven. Yep, yep. I don't know where. I think I decided two weeks before the tournament, or three weeks before the tournament, I was going to go. Uh, we'll go. Took seventh. Uh, oh, I God. went like I went eleven and one at busy duels. Wrestled really well. Like we went yeah. out to junior duels. I did really well, and then I started getting recruited. And my grades, I got a 29 on my ACT. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, I didn't do very well in my Yeah. So like things started coming together, but it wasn't until right before my senior year that we realized what we needed to be doing to like okay. prove so your your junior year was that guy. that year was like you had eight matches before you came in and, and were able to do yeah. anything. Yeah. I think I was okay. sixteen or I think it was twenty six and oh when it was all said and done. And okay. we lost in the state finals for a team that year or two. So okay. we had a okay. lot of matches. So not not a lot of talk of your your junior year. It's still, I mean, it no. still sounds like it was uh, successful. I mean, as far as the the ending team team stayed two years in a row, right? Um, no, we won it my sophomore year. Oh, okay, that's um, right. Yeah, oh seven and, and my, I think it and was. then my senior year, which was yeah. incredible. Yeah, yeah, we won thirty well, twenty nine that year. So let's let's talk let's talk about your your senior year right now. So you're you you guys come off of uh, you know come off of a. a state run didn't happen your senior year coming in what were your aspirations of i mean obviously you've got four in your sights right so yeah. you're trying to win four state titles uh, what's what's in the the front of your mind when you start the season out besides i mean your team you guys are you guys have to you know build something together again see if you can get a state championship as a team where are you guys in the room do you guys are you all healthy or is there someone else hurt that's coming up that uh, how is the team looking right away we're good I yeah. mean, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. I think uh, one of the best teams going into my senior year, 
Yeah. It was a really not our best team, yeah. but like we had a lot of problems internally. Okay. My junior okay. year. Sure. Um, I was at the same weight class as one of the fab five freshmen that came up like before us. And okay. They were sophomores. Now I was a junior mm-hmm. and I'm mm-hmm. in one of the weight classes and we were just, yeah, but yeah, yeah it's, we just yeah. weren't, didn't, we didn't like each other. And Ben Bennett was our senior captain and yeah. him and the other, one of the sophomores would go to war all the time. He was really good and they would fight yeah. and stuff. It just was not, we didn't like each other like that. So the only right. thing I could think of my senior year, I don't even care about the fourth state title it would mean nothing to me if we don't win one. As okay. A team. Okay. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Like we should have won. This should be, I should be going for my eighth, seventh and eighth state titles right now. Yeah. So my only goal is I went out and printed some stickers because they didn't put logos on headgear. So oh, I got yeah. some stickers made and I went and met everyone in the parking lot from the school before school started and was like, listen, let me lead us this year. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's not fight. And we just came together. And that was the only thing I could think of was just trying to be friends with these guys. Yeah. Let's be a team. Cool. And like, because how am I? I'm not gonna. It's not gonna do me to get a train with the guy that doesn't like me either. Right. That we're not buddies and we're not in this together. Right. You know. Yep. If you guys yeah. got your own life, like, and I'm on an island right now, like that's not good for me. Especially for the next four months, you know. Yeah. When, when you you're know. dealing with the season coming up for sure. Yeah. yeah. So where did where did you guys? I mean, so what? Let's talk about that a little bit. We we kind of dive into some with some of these guys like team building. What were mm-hmm. you? What did you? What came up in your head to to help build? Like, were you guys? You know, you see some guys doing like spaghetti dinners, things like that. Where you guys sleeping over, like you doing, yeah, go, going to reaching out, maybe hitting a camp together or something like that, or or doing whatever you can during the season. W- was it just little things like that? Just because I mean, we're all from the Midwest, right? Who doesn't have a crock pot in their house where you have a bunch of guys come over, maybe you know, watch some old wrestling movies or something like that? But yeah. what was that the kind of thing you guys were doing? We just uh, hung out at usually at one of the kids' houses. Yeah, like a lot. The parents were all really tight too. Okay. So that sophomore awesome. group was now juniors. Yeah. And they all lived in some nicer houses. So I would yeah. just I could drive. And I lived in Granville, which was 40 ish, 35, 40 minutes away in the wintertime, about 40, 45. Yeah. So a lot of times, like, I don't want to go home after practice. And I have club that night too. So yeah. school, practice, and then club. Ooh. Can I just come over and stay the night? Like, yeah, right. And I'll just. You know, you have some clothes I can borrow. Like, right, you know, right. So that's like, that's how it started. Floyd Mayweather was fighting back then. Yeah. So the parents love hosting the boxing fight. So all the parents would come and then we'd all go downstairs and they'd cook food. And oh, awesome. Every that's Saturday awesome. after a tournament, we'd always meet up at one of the parents' houses. We'd all hang out with each other after the tournament. Yeah. Until sure. whenever we wanted to. If we wanted to all stay there, we all would. And that's then awesome. Parents were cool with it. Well, but, it sounds yeah. like you went to any length you could, you know, to make sure that you guys made something happen, did it together. Yeah. And, and we loved each that, other. Yeah. It just yeah, yeah. got put in a weird situation. And there was a, a lot of, after JJ Johnson and Jeff Shudich left yeah. their senior year. Yep. There's a big hole in leadership. Oh, sure. Like they kept everyone in line and like, we looked up to them so much and we yeah. looked up to Ben too. And we loved Ben, Yeah, like a different style of leadership. Yep. We needed this kind of leader. Ben was lead by example. The other guys were more vocal. Yep. It's just a little different. So Sure. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And then certain guys learn certain ways too. I mean, there's yeah. guys that'll feed off of, uh, of, you know, what one thing that you do and then another thing they don't. So it's, it's interesting. That's, that's, it's great to see that you guys were able to, you know, know that let's this, if there's any reason why we don't, it's only because of us. Right. So yeah. you guys pulled together and did a great job on that. I don't know why my camera is zooming way out like that, but it is. Um, <laughs> so, so with, with that being said, the, <laughs> the senior year you had was a, uh, Pretty pretty well mm-hmm. documented. I mean, you I I watched I don't know how many of the um the interviews <laughs> that you had and a couple of the the clips that I got to see that I mean Michigan was all over you. So let's talk mm-hmm. about your individual side of it since you are, you know, because the team has a lot to do with that. So when you're when you're deciding to, you know, you're making four year run, what were some of the tougher matches on the way there? Did you have any tough matches on the way there? That's yeah, I lost. You sounded pretty dominant, man. You know, I I was good. Yeah, right. I didn't think so. Okay, okay. Like deep down, deep yeah. down, I played a lot of weird mental games with myself, where there's a lot of doubt. But that's pretty deeply. That's 
deep seated thing from like growing up and yeah. living. I'm sure like, I'm not afraid to say it. Like I've been to sports therapists and stuff before, but sure. like growing up in the environment I grew up in. Yeah. And still yeah. a lot of insecurity. Okay. So that I, but yep. I think that was a catalyst for how I would perform on the mat. Cause that insecurity okay. would fire me up and I'm like, I'm not going to let that happen. Like I'm going to okay. go out and perform. So you I'd like walk myself in circles. Yeah. It was weird yeah. as hell. Like I would look at the clock. I wrestled a kid that was five and 25 one time, but he looked strong. Yeah. And in my head, I thought there was a chance he was going to beat me my senior year. Like I was like, man, this might be the kid. It's like, almost like how strong panic is. you put yourself. Yeah. In. And then yeah. all of a sudden I start walking out there and I would just get so fired up that when I would step on the line, it was just go, 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 go. Like I just run this kid over as quick man. as I can. Whew. It was wild, man. But I so, didn't figure that out until yeah. college. But yeah. Well, and so that, again, it, it speaks volumes to the, like what the kids have access to now for coaches, right? At, yeah. at the ages that they have with the guys like you that are coming back to the high schools and coaching, you guys bring that level of things that, you know, they're, they're going through that a lot. Like you said, your dad didn't wrestle, but there's a lot of kids that are out here. Their dads don't wrestle. They don't know that anxiety that happens when you're just out there by yourself. Yeah. And you're like, oh man, I'm, and especially as dominant as you were you already are playing probably through your head. Like I've got to do this. I have to perform this way, you know, minus the social media stuff and things like that. You're doing it. You're kind of telling yourself I can, you know, I can, I can identify with that. It's just, you, you've built this persona for yourself and not even everybody else may around you, baby, you know, telling you this, but in your head, you're like, I've got to do this. If I don't do this, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know if, you know, if it's a social fear of getting made fun of or whatever it is, but I've got to perform. You know, so, yeah. so did, you're, yeah. you, you're kind of putting yourself up in a, in a position too, where, I mean, the stress factor happens where you almost want to quit. Did you ever have that? Did you ever get to a point where you're like, I want to hang it up. I don't, I don't think I can do this anymore. It's too much. Yeah. Like yeah. all the time. Not, I would say not once I got into high school. Okay. You know, like I did yeah. this twice my senior year. Yep. And like, I lost to the same kind of lost to my sophomore year and stuff like that. But yeah, growing up, there was so many moments where I was like, man, this sucks, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, school's tough. School's tough already as it is like socially at school. I'm not the guy. Right. Like I'm a really, really tiny, tiny kid and we don't have (laughs) any money. Like we were broke. Yeah. So I'm I'm at this nice Granville school and like we're in the same pair of damn jeans I wore. The last three yeah. weeks, because you yeah. know, and like these kids are, it's just I. There was a lot going on up there, yeah. so it's like I don't know. Shit. I was like, man, I would rather not wrestle. Like this sucks. But yeah. I think the wanting to quit would would happen when I'd have a bad practice. Like okay, I'd be like, okay. man, I just I don't want to do this anymore. Or yeah. all of a sudden we'd be at a practice for three hours. I'd get home, it's nine fifteen, and then. I eat some crappy meal and I'm like, man, like, this sucks, man. Like, yeah, I could have yeah. got home at three 30 and then watching cartoons. Like I and missed all my shows. I, yeah, I missed all my shows today. And like, but my dad always told me like, this is it for you. Like, do you want to play college athletics? And that was it yeah. for me. Like I was an athlete. Like yeah. I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to play college football at one point. Like Damn. that kind of kid. Yeah. You know, I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. How okay. But, but I was like, listen, <laughs> Well, he told me you're not going to be big enough to play football. Yeah. You're not a fast enough runner to be small and play baseball. He was like, you're definitely not going to do some other sport that you don't even play regularly. So you should wrestle. This is it. This is it it for you. He didn't throw out softball. Like I'm surprised he didn't say you should do softball because I mean, he loved watching me play baseball, but yeah. 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 I I got hit with a baseball in seventh grade, like right in my cap. And I did like a flip. Like it literally made me do a flip. I could yeah. barely walk. And yeah. my dad goes, well, guess you can't go to camp this weekend. And I was like, oh yeah, that sucks. In my head, I'm like, this is great. And then he was like, guess we're not playing baseball anymore. And I was oh. like, what? He's like, yeah. He goes, we can't be missing wrestling because you're playing some other sport and getting hurt. Like, oh yeah. They, yeah. Okay. But okay. It's, I think it's different because I probably – I get it, man. Like yeah. I'm 68 pounds. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing playing baseball or football? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, you're really, really, really good at this. Like, yeah. If you want to be good at athletics, like this is the safe thing. I got hurt doing everything else. Do this. Like, yeah. I just got hurt. 
like playing football. I get hurt playing baseball. Like you know, it's it's you interesting know. you you mentioned that because uh, Max um, Sunquist from up in up uh, yeah up in the UP. UP yeah he he was playing football forever and he I was just talking to his dad the other day and he brought up the fact that you know he was getting hurt a lot in football and he missed wrestling and we hadn't seen him in the wrestling room for a while because he messed his ankle up and there's uh, something else you know he got hurt in football but then he was back right and i kind of talked to his dad and he just said yeah he's like he's done, he's just sick of being hurt sick of being hurt so he's he we, we said you got to pick one thing and do the one thing i mean we grew up like i was just uh we just i just did an interview with uh, um uh who was i talking to the other day just said that you know we played five sports you know, when we were kids, I did baseball, mm-hmm. golf, tennis, uh, wrestling, soccer. Soccer was my gig. But, you know, it was just one of those things where you, your dad was starting to see you. And at that point that you if you want to be good at it and it's something that you like doing, you have to just do this because otherwise you're going to struggle. You're going to be upset not being able to do well. So that that's pretty cool that, again, you still had a solid you know platform of a dude to be able to go off of yeah, and basically, you know, you know, to, to do something with. So and congratulations to him on that. Cause it's not easy to do it on your own. Yeah. He's the right. right. I, hope so, that, uh, I hope that I can handle my child's life the way he handled mine. Yeah. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It makes me yeah. a little bit emotional because he's yeah. the man. Dude. Yeah. It's, he's I mean, man. hindsight's always like we just said, hindsight's always 20, 20. But when you look at the grand scheme of things, they did what they had to and what they could yeah. in the time, you know, and it was all for the better, really. So hey, you're in your senior year now. You, you're making a little bit of noise coming up to state. Is this when you start hearing from colleges a little bit more now as, as the end of your senior year starts showing up? So, and I, I would say right before Fargo, I started talking to Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. Um, not talking to them, but like, there was this rule where like I could call them. Yeah. Like I was just, I forget what the rule was, but they couldn't within, be doing all the contacting. Yeah. yeah. Within boundaries, I reach out to them, but they still hadn't really seen me wrestle. Yeah. Well, after Fargo going into my senior year, they came up to me and was like, we're going to be at your house next week. So Mark Manning flew in a plane to my house in cool. September and showed up just to take me out to dinner, made me an offer and then flew back to Lincoln. Wow. So it was pretty special. And yeah. the, the offer actually wasn't what I needed because I didn't know. I didn't know. We don't know. Right. Like, right. My dad's never been to college. No one yeah. in my entire family has been to college. Like, yeah. So we didn't know that there was only 9.9 scholarships for a division one wrestling. Sure. Sure. We figured, yep. we figured, man, I'm about to get taken care of. Well, he hands me the envelope and I remember looking, opening it up going, 50 percent like what <laughs> and i like and i looked at yeah. my dad and my dad was like oh, what a waste of time like yeah. in my head and then like mark manning finally explained to us i think he saw a reaction he was like uh-oh because yeah, i know a know. couple other guys just committed i know they were going after them so i know oh. the number of prospects that they could get to go to that school yeah dwindling <laughs> steber committed taylor committed yep. like these guys are all gone yep. so i'm like all right well let me i'm gonna sit on it and he was yep. like, not the answer I don't think he was looking for. Got on the plane and flew back. He calls me at 5 o'clock in the morning the next day. This is school day. And I'm like, <laughs> woke up. I answer the phone. He's like, Kyle, listen, yeah. uh, I'm thinking maybe we could add books and fees to your thing. And I was like, you know what? That like kind of put it over the point that I needed sure, for financial sure. stuff. And I was like, yeah. we'll do it. So yeah. it was like mid-September. And I had been out there three times already. I'd met okay. Jordan Burroughs when I was out there. Uh, nice. Paul Donahoe was my host when I went there one day. Oh, okay. So like, yeah. And the team in Lincoln, Nebraska was so awesome. Like I, yeah. to this day, I love that place. And it felt like home. Yeah. When I went to Michigan, it didn't really feel like that. Michigan State didn't feel like that. Yep. Eastern Michigan was actually incredible. Like I okay. almost went to Bulliard, who's at Michigan now, is there. Yeah. And like I almost went there. I okay. almost went there. It was that close. But I committed this. <laughs> I committed way before the season started just to get it out of the way. Sure. And I knew, sure. I knew in my heart where I wanted to go. So what's so, the point? Like, so when you did, when you did that though, were there still other schools that were trying to reach out like in the time? Cause they didn't know maybe, or they didn't, they hadn't heard anything. Um, I think, I think I had a lot of envelopes in the mail, Yeah, you know, Yeah. but I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. 
I didn't even sold. open them. You're sold. I didn't even open them. I knew I wanted to say, I, I thought I wanted to stay close. Yeah. So I was like, it's either if I'm going to go anywhere, I'll go to yeah. Nebraska. But okay. Paul Donahoe was there and he just won a national title at my weight class. Yep. And then this is before that stuff hell happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yep. committed and then this stuff happened. So I yeah, committed yeah. thinking Paul was going to be my coach. I'm like, dude, yeah. this is this is yeah, so sick. Like I watched Paul win a Nebraska single it. Like I'm going to go there and win a national title. Right. For sure. And then yep. that stuff happened. Yep. And then I went there and it was still great. But like there was a little part of me that felt a little bit of a disconnect of like why I was there. Yeah. You know. So the, we, we know. talked a little bit about that in the past, about that experience going into the Nebraska room, kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're going from a high school room, just middle school to high school, then high school to college. I mean, it's a transition. It's a, you're talking, you're talking men now, right? When you're going to college, yeah. you're ta- men, straight up men. Okay. So you're at, you're at what you said, one, was it 118 or something, I think, or 120? I was just over 120. Okay. Like, yeah. At the, at I think it was 124. Year. Five okay. every day. Even okay. when I went to Nebraska and showed up, I was yep. still under 130 pounds, like soaking wet. Yeah, because Ma- I mean, a max squat of 105, 115. I'm not joking. I have I have got a story about that, but <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We we'll get when to that. you got to your you got to your state final, and I watched an interview <laughs> of you where you talked about in the state finals where you're like it was a weight off your shoulders. It was uh-huh. you know it was it was done. It was kind of a completion, right? Like you kind of breathe a little bit. Um, and you'd made your commitment, things like that. So as you, as you work over towards getting into college and where you, when your senior year ended, were you already like, uh, had been to Nebraska after your visits, had you gone there for any type of training in between? Does your state have anything with that or where, you know, what were you doing during your senior year, just getting your wrestling high school stuff or, um, we couldn't, I couldn't go there and train. Okay. Okay. Logistically I, wouldn't, wouldn't work out either. Yep. But okay. I know I had a, in reality, I was just out with, down in Ohio as yeah. much as I could, as yeah. much as I Dude. could go yeah, down you... there. We're milking what that a win-win. Pile. Get down there. Um, How long was it my, drive down to those, those guys? Five hours. Okay. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah. Right. I needed to be there for a week. Nice. You know? Yeah. But my club coach, Craig Chudich, wrestled at Central Michigan. Yep. And... And he's just like such a great guy. Like yeah. he knew exactly what I needed to be learning and stuff like that. But I okay. okay. right when I got out of high school or my, in the state finals, I, my junior year, when I hurt my knee, I never mm-hmm. got it fixed. So in the state finals, okay. my senior year, there was a, they put this new sticky mat down on the ground. Yeah. And I didn't know it was sticky. It's the first time Ooh. they ever used it. Yeah. And I thought it was a towel. Ooh. So I went, I put my leg down and went to like twist my foot around to wipe it off in the towel. Yeah. And pop, pop. Oh, and this is right before the match. And my adrenaline just spiked and I was like, I just completely destroyed my knee. So I went out, won the state finals. And then we went and got an MRI done and I had torn my meniscus in like three different spots. Yeah. And I had a partially torn MCL, but they didn't oh think they God. needed to do surgery on that, but they needed to do a meniscus repair. Yeah, but I had to go to senior nationals, oh, and I'm like, I really want to do this. Like I've been watching yeah. senior national VHS tapes since yeah. I was seven. Right, like I've been dreaming of wrestling in this tournament. I'm going. I'm so going. I went and wrestled on one leg and took third. Oh, did amazing, God. and then the next wow. day I drove to Nebraska to Lincoln to their doctors, and they did surgery yeah. on me like the next day. And then holy cow! Wow. So I was didn't do anything. Until June 6th was I graduated. And then June 6th, I drove, my dad drove me to Nebraska, literally pulled up to the Devaney where we work out, yeah. threw my bags on the ground and said, see ya, got in the car and drove off. <laughs> I know he's listening right now. And that hurt me a little bit. <laughs> see ya. I was like, Holy okay, shit. just walked in with my bags. And that was the I'm here, guys. Yeah. No, I just walked in. They're like, who the hell is this? I didn't know where to go. Oh, Nobody's there. Man. It's summertime. There ain't nobody there. So I walked in. I was like, I think the restroom's over here on my visit. So I'm like walking in the restroom. I just walk in with my bags. They're like, oh, Waldo's here. And yeah. Was, yep. <laughs> it's me, guys. I'm here. I'm yeah. Here. Oh. Where am I staying? Slept That's... on someone's couch for all summer. It was fun. No kidding. Okay. So you're, 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 
Wow. You are thrust into college. You're thrust mm-hmm. into college. You're you're starting out there a little early. You're there a tad down. early. Yep. Yeah. So you're there a little early. Where were you kind of mentally wise once that season started? How did that fire off for you your freshman year? You redshirted? Yeah, they forced me to. Okay. Um it didn't start off very well. Okay. Um, I didn't okay. have any success in the summertime. I didn't score okay. a single point all summer, not one. Oh wow. Okay. And because I was really weak. Because sure. I my legs from yeah. having the surgery too. Yeah. So I was kind of doing therapy on the knee okay. and try and lifting weights hard. Wow. Like hard. I went from being 124 when I showed up June 4th. Mm-hmm. By the first day of school, I weighed 141. Yeah. Yeah, you got yeah. big. Okay. I, I think my squat went from 115 to like 205. My bench went from like 135 to like 185. Like wow. just well yeah. then once I got strong, I started doing a little better in the conditioning workouts too. So like mm-hmm. my brain started really firing. All of a sudden I'm like different than high school now. Now yeah. I think I'm the man. And then one practice, I got a takedown in overtime on one of our starters. Yeah. And I remember it just took my headgear off and I spiked it into the wall as hard as I could. And I kicked the doors open and just ran out in the hallway in the middle of practice, just screaming up and down. I was like, this is it, man. I was like, I'm the man now. And went back inside and I did so good. I think I went 24 and six my redshirt freshman year. It was a like, switch. It really well. Oh, it was. No From that kidding. moment on, I was like, I'm the man now. Okay. Like, I'm the man. But right. it wasn't good for me because I never got checked on it. And I probably should have got checked on it because I'm going oh. to the coaches going, I want to start. Like I'm not the time to win is now. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And you're, they're telling me that I could beat McDonough, like saying things like that to me, Erslin okay. from Purdue, who yeah. coaches at Purdue now, he goes, yeah. your leg attacks are better than McDonough's right now. I'm telling you. And I'm like, then what are we doing? Yeah. What are, you, then what you what are we for? doing? Let's yeah. find out. Right. Let's find out. Yeah. And it just kind of, the guy that recruited me, Mike Greenfield, went to be an AD in Illinois. Jason yep. Mester, who is my personal coach, he left and went to Missouri. Yeah. And those are the guys that were so close to me. So when they left, they kind, kind of, of felt a little weird. You know? But the season did start off. To get back to your question, the season did start really good. Okay. It started off okay. really good now. School was great. Everyone was great. It was super fun. But so – we and we don't dive into it too much, but obviously you're talking about these coaches, these guys that were there that really kept that that fired you up, you know, that were mm-hmm. the guys that could probably take you, you know, somewhere if you needed to. And then all of a sudden one goes and the next goes. Like, does that happen? And we watch administrations, you know, here and there is when it comes to college wrestling. We see them, you know, well, one coach moves on, but the other three still stay. Mm-hmm. How, what what are the what are the what are you looking for? And your dad didn't know, but like now that you know, like what questions would you have asked going into a college? Like, you know, what, are you going to be here? Are you, how, are you hanging out? How long are you going to be around? Are those questions kids should ask these coaches when they're, when they're being recruited? Like, you know, because it's hard to guess, you know, right. You're, you're going to go in and how do you know who's going to leave and stay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough question. I don't, I'd be honest. I never thought about that. Because what do you do? I, guess I mean, they have contracts. The right? number one thing I've been telling our guys, anybody yeah. that's ever come from our school, mm-hmm. is because I got hurt in college, obviously. So yep. I would just go, well, take wrestling away. Yeah. You still stay there. That's good advice. That's going to tell you a lot. Yeah. Like yeah, if yeah. you didn't wrestle, are you? do you want to live there? Do mm-hmm. you want to go to school there? Yep. Can you see yourself sticking around there to maybe right. do even graduate work? Is that a place you want to be first? Like okay. as a person, you want to be yep. there. And then we can go to the wrestling side and say, like, you know, in the couple of visits and the conversations you have, do you trust this guy? Yeah. And, like, yeah. what kind of conversation? Like, then I would ask him, like, so what's your plan as a coach? Agreed. Like, where do you see yourself here in five years? Right. Do you think you're yeah. going to be taken over as head coach at some of the, like, in North mm-hmm. Carolina a few years ago, probably would have yeah. been asking Ramos that question. Like, where do you see he's going at? It's tough, right? I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I would have been smart not to ask that question back in the day but sure. it sucks that you have to ask like i would hope that these guys are for like honest with the guys that they're recruiting like hey listen i'm not sure what my hope. future looks like here but yeah yeah i don't know would hope. that's a good question man that's yeah, really yeah good question. i mean it's just one of those things because that's the way that things that's go now with money you know like who yeah. are you what are you, what am, what are you're investing in me but what what 
what are you giving me out of that? You know, like, am I know you, do I know you're going to be here? You know, do I, right. I like you, you know, I, I, that's why I want to come here. Do I know you're going to be here for four years while I'm here? If not, what happens? You know, and yeah. like you said, I think it'd be like- dangerous to tie yourself up to a coach though. Yeah. Like I, I can see, I can see going to a college for a specific mm-hmm. coach, but yep. I feel like I'd rather choose a program. True. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Failed point. I'd rather choose the program. Yeah, it'd, it'd be great to have coaches there for you. Like, of course right. that's important. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I feel that like the point. best programs will have the people that you need there. So yeah. even yeah. even if one guy leaves, we're going to bring in, some, which is what Nebraska did. When yeah. Mester left, they brought in Powell, mm-hmm. who was mm-hmm. a national champion there. Right. So like, if I would have just, like, if I would have just fought, I wanted to follow Mester. If I would have followed somebody, I would have followed him. But they brought yeah. in Powell, and Powell was fantastic. So right on. It's right like, on. Yeah. All, all valid. I got burned. I got burned a little bit. So I was just like, I'm a little hesitant <laughs> to like put all my trust in this one guy. I'd rather trust the program as a whole, all the coaches, the administration, sure. like it's going And on that makes here. sense. I mean, because that, that flows then into the RTCs now too, you know, like, cause uh, all those other coaches mm-hmm. probably have a hand in that. And you gotta, you have to like, right now I've been preaching mainly to Liam, you know, the, the school's great, but you also want to train for other things like world, you know, team trials and things like that. What's the right. RTC look like? Is that pr- part of the program going to, going to work for you? So, you know, it's a big, it's a big scope to, to look through, but now with your freshman year coming, you know, and all these guys kind of left out, what happened at Nebraska? When did, when did the decision to not stay at Burton, Nebraska come? Um, I think it started after the first semester, uh, sorry, the first school year was done. Okay. I went home yep. and I didn't do that well the second semester. So they wanted me to come back to take some summer classes just to boost oh, the GPA sure. up as high as I could. Yeah. And when I came back, it was me and Jordan Burroughs taking a nutrition class and mm-hmm. I had to drive. <laughs> he would give me a ride back to my house or whatever every day. So we were in this class like every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope Jordan doesn't kill me for telling this story. <laughs> so there was one day where Jordan and I were in class, but we're also doing summer camps. So yeah. Yeah. we're lifting in the morning, doing camps. We have a workout in the afternoon. Like it's a lot. Sure. And so yeah. we, Jordan and I have class, but we have a nutrition class and they're making us work out. And Jordan and I are like, why do we have to do this? Right. I'm working out for five hours today. You want to see if I can, if I'm learning anything, come watch yeah. me wrestle. So Jordan <laughs> goes, let's go get my car. We're out of here after between, because we had a class on one side of the road. You had to walk across the street to the yeah. union to go work out. And so instead of going to the union, we just went Err! and went to his car. <laughs> Teacher calls Coach Manning and tells him. Oh, no. Jordan and Kyle skipped down on the workout part of class. And then he's like, I understand why. I just wish they wouldn't have done that. Well, Manning calls me at my house and just like just lays, wah, wah, just lays yeah. into me. Yeah. And I don't know. It started this a lack of trust started to be developed on my side where I was like, okay, my coaches aren't there. I was just like, I was beating Dave, our starter during the year. And you guys yeah. just, again, I didn't trust the process. I didn't understand that okay. red shirting was good for me. Okay. That right, actually right. helped me a lot. And it got me yeah. stronger. It got me ready to go. Like when I look in hindsight, man, what a great thing. Like I leaving was a bad decision on my part. And okay. I'll always, I'll always tell the truth. It was a yeah. terrible, terrible decision. Yeah. And it was based on something that wasn't existing. Like I left right. because I thought I was being screwed. In reality, they were protecting me yeah. and they were trying to get me ready to be the man. And they yeah. could see that I wasn't a man yet. Yeah. Like I hadn't figured it out. They're like, just hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't. I was like, screw this. I'm out of here. And my dad could never come watch me wrestle. I mean, I'm going to Iowa and Kansas for open tournaments. He can't make that drive every weekend. Right. So it's tough, right. man. It's tough. And then my dad and I talked and he's like, it's time. I think you should come back to Central. So I got them to release me from my scholarship and Manning didn't want to let me go. So he told me to get bet. And I was like, oh, really? So I went to the athletic director, Tom Osborne. Yeah. And sat in his office and told him, I want to go home. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to be here anymore. And he was like, okay, if you don't want to be here, I ain't going to keep you here. And he let me go. So he overrode Coach Manning, let me go for my scholarship. 
And then I got a scholarship offer from the central and went straight there like weeks later. I was wow. There. Okay. Yeah, but I couldn't leave until like mid August though, because yeah, I was waiting probably- for this whole thing to go to, Go through itself over, you know. Yeah. So yeah. The it was really stressful, and then I got there, and it was hard because it was so different, you know. Yeah. Like from well, big time country to yeah that. You know? Yeah, because you you went like you said you had gone into an environment that you were looking forward to, right? I mean, it wasn't mm-hmm. Central Michigan wasn't even anything you really entertained at all, you know. So. No. Like you said, you're also going from a Big Ten room, you know, into a a different type of college room. So not to say that it's worse or better, but it wasn't what you were expecting, right? It wasn't something that that was a part of your story. So when you got in there, was that kind of like, I mean, your first couple practices, what were you thinking? Like, this is this isn't I shouldn't have done this either. Or were you like, I got to get this time. I got to work through this and figure it out because we remember you talking about how you had, you know, these stories in your head and the things that you've been doing kind of yourself since high school, where, where yeah. were you at mentally when you got into central Michigan? Well, I tore my knee up again in the spring before I left. Shit. So I was still, and obviously I decided to transfer. So I guess yeah. we couldn't do therapy anymore. At yeah. The school. Oh Me. man. So what am I going to do? I can't yeah. go into the athletic facilities anymore and get therapy on my knee. Yeah. So it's kind of oh. hobbling around. So the first part of this uh, fall was spent just getting back into it and yeah. getting my lungs back underneath me. And yeah. the guys were super accepting. Like I did love central Michigan. Okay. I loved okay. It. Like coach Braley is one of the greatest human beings on the planet earth. Like I yeah. love that guy. But yeah. all the guys in the team, nobody like held it against me that I was probably going to take one of their spots. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt really good. It felt okay. really good. But the problem is I was getting stronger and I was getting bigger. So <laughs> they wanted me. I agreed to go 125 for at least two years. There was zero chance. I realized pretty early on that I didn't have the discipline level in order to do that. Okay. Not that okay. I couldn't do it. I was going to say it wasn't have, attainable. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just didn't have the knowledge. And I didn't have the help. Like at Nebraska, if I go to the, the weight training guy or the nutritionist that yeah. they have, they're going to give me a meal card. And I go yep. to the athletic meal table, and they will make me my food, and I eat these calories. At Central, there's a Walmart down the road. Good luck. So I didn't have any cooking skills. I didn't have yeah. any knowledge of how to actually get myself down there. Yet. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, was not mature enough yeah. to be – to go and figure that out yeah, and find yeah, it. Yeah. This wasn't, it just wasn't, man. It's a perfect so, storm. So that was that the beginning of the end. Um, once I got hurt, it was, it was, once I, yeah, I dropped off a pull-up bar and a herniation in my neck popped out. Like I lost feeling in my entire left arm. Whoa. And like, yeah. So like, I thought I, I couldn't move my head left or right. Yeah. yeah. So I hit and I was like, I can't, I couldn't move. I might, couldn't feel wow. my heart. So I was like, oh, what the hell? Yeah. And they just laid me down and got an MRI and had a two herniations, C4, C5, C5, oh, C6. Oh, man. And the doctor was like, yeah, we can get you a, I was 22. They're like, we can do a spinal fusion. Or, yeah, well. Or you're just. Yeah. And I'm by myself in Saginaw at a doctor and oh, he's ending my, my career. And I'm in that room alone with nobody else no coaches they never called to ask no roommate with you no nobody with you no Holy no and shit. It, it didn't seem like anybody cared either yeah, at yeah. the time as soon as it yeah. happened um i don't want to get into it too much but right there was a co- there was a coach at central that kind of just destroyed me for it damn like just maybe yeah. told me i was a failure to my family the team wow coach Brelli. that's and rough so there's no coming back from that. So that That's was tough. the beginning of the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, not, it, not only do I feel bad, but you're going to. Right. Hold yeah. me up against the wall, like in the hallway yeah. and tell me I'm a failure. Like, come on, man. Wow. <laughs> I'm a That's, victim of circumstance yeah. at this point. That's pretty crazy. You know, and we talk about just the, the validity of what a kid, you know, the decision that they're making at 16, 17, going into a college and, you know, knowing that you're having to deal with that, you know, as far as just that, I mean, it's got to make, obviously it made the decision like, like, no, I'm not going through this anymore. I'm, 
I'm done, no. you know, kind of thing where you got to you got to pull the plug. But at the same time, though, too, it's heartbreaking to kind of hear that there's a reaction like that to someone yeah. getting hurt. You know, now, I should say this too, just a disclaimer: that guy yeah. has not been in the program. He was fired the next right, year, right? But right, Central Michigan is not like that now. Like right. I love everyone up there now. Right, you're and good, I've Central Michigan. There. We got you. Yeah, I love Central. Go now. Chips. Like it's not a bad place for you to send your kid. Like I feel right. bad. It's, it's tough because. It's your I have story, to tell though. the truth about my story. Yeah, but my story happened to me. Yep, yep. And there's right. a, there's some I know some other people that had some similar things, but like mm-hmm. Pirelli runs a really tight ship. Yeah, and he got the right guys in there, and he yeah. took and even when that was going on, he took care of me. He right, like checked right. on me, and even yeah. when I was out of college years down the road, yep, he would just I would just hear from him. Random. Like I love that guy. And yeah, I, like I probably wouldn't have made it very far if it wasn't for how he reacted to that whole entire thing, too. So, well, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it sounds life. like those guys, yeah. like it, it, they removed the cancer too. Like you said, he was gone. Like yep. they they found out about stuff. They knew that that bad knew was going probably, on. Yeah, yeah, gone. So you're you're coming to an end of your college career, right? You're um, unfortunately you weren't able to go all the way through, but there are things that came out of that. You know, like and I always tell mm-hmm. Liam about this as far as you know, make it as far and, and make it as the best that you can, because you're going to make relationships. You're going to, you're going to meet people along the way. Or you're going to create certain situations for yourself just through the sport itself. So we ran into you because you were spreading your knowledge through <laughs> wrestling camps, right? Yep. So you're taking it to the kids and taking the knowledge that you've learned through the years. And just the, I mean, you're learning, you were learning with Logan Steber. Like, I mean, I can't imagine that you're taking bad knowledge of these kids in the wrestling room. Right. So no. as you, as you got out of college wrestling, like were did you take a hiatus? Obviously there must've been a break. You must've gotten out, gotten healed up, felt better, wanted to kind of release your mind from things I would imagine just to kind of let things go and kind of decompress. What were you doing in those times? What did you, did you, were you done with school in general? Um, I attended school for what, three more years after I got hurt. Okay. Uh, yeah, and yep. then came back to Grand Rapids. Yep. So it was like 2012, 2013. Okay. Is when I came back to GR. Started okay. running extreme. Um, But before that, I didn't really want anything to do with wrestling anymore. Yeah. Didn't Except want anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah, I was hurting bad. Like I could, it was I could imagine. And I, I tell people my guys this all the time too, my high school guys. You have got to learn how to be a person. Right. You have to. Yeah. Like I grew up my entire life not doing anything but wrestling, 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 sleep, video games, wrestling. So mm-hmm. when wrestling got taken out of the equation, whereas I have no motivation to do anything, I have yeah. no purpose. I mean, I was going to school to win a national title. Sure. Yeah. Not going that's, to school. That's what to go to school. Kind of so, ask the question. I mean, I know you finished school, but I mean, yeah, at some point you got to wonder, dude. do you want to be you there? You got to wonder what the hell happened. Like, yeah. And yeah. it took me three years before I was like, oh, like maybe I'll just go into coaching wrestling. I've got to, I've got to get back into this because I don't feel like myself anymore. And then Roy yeah. Hall saw me at the state tournament, Roy Hall. Yep. And I was sitting in the hallway and I said hi to him and he said, Hey. And they're like, I never really talked to him. And I was like, What's up, Roy? And he's like, Yeah, you're gonna be a really good coach. I can see it. You should do this. <laughs> and I I Roy is like a mythological creature yeah. walking through the hallways. So I was like, Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. And I did. <laughs> That's and I did it for his, I rode the wheels off of that thing, you know. You did. And my my high school coach told me too, when you have when you feel like you're in there moment where yep. you're able to go and travel and do camps just do it as hard as you can yep. but also know when to get off the yeah train, yeah you know which that's is a good point now it's a good point I mean? so, well and i think the the way to do it you know you you were doing it you're getting your name out there you know you're you're spreading your knowledge and to me that's kind of like a salesman way of doing it you know you're selling yourself yeah. and the knowledge that you have before you get into a position like that because i mean the head coach of a high school man and and as far as i know down in lower michigan a lot of the high schools are pretty goddamn competitive so to be able to you know walk into a situation like that and i know i mean i've heard of grand rapids wrestling you know just with liam Mm -hmm. especially going around with him not when i was wrestling you're lucky if i knew about minnesota next door when i was wrestling i was (laughs) worried about soccer but 
now kind of going through the stuff that we've been through and the places that we've been in wrestling and, and hearing about some of the Michigan stories that you, the, the program that you're in, let's talk about that. What, what drove you to want to necessarily go home? I mean, everybody goes home and visits, right? But what drove you to home? What was part of it that made you want to go back to where it all started to, to coach and not say, Oh, I want to try to go into uh, Iowa and coach a, you know, Iowa high schooler. What made right. you want to go back home and coach? Um, Nate, there was a kid named Nate Limix and Austin Boone. Okay. Um, I kind of got linked up with them. Yep. Like, this is truly, this is truly how it all started. Yeah. And I was doing individual lessons with them and they were seeing unbelievable amount of success like, yeah. right away. <laughs> and I was like, all right, this is kind of cool, but I don't think I really chose Grand Rapids it was kind of just the only option I really had out of high school or out of college. Cause I was kind of lost. I didn't really okay. know. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like I didn't yeah. want to be done with this wrestling thing. I thought mm-hmm. I was always going to be a division one head coach there at some point, like I'm obsessed with this sport. So yeah. I was kind of just finding myself. I feel okay. like, like not in a big woo woo type of way, yeah. but yeah. Tons of different jobs. Like yeah. doing just traveling all over. And like, I'm obsessed you'll figure you've known this. I'm obsessed with wrestling technique. Yeah. I'm obsessed yeah, you are. I yeah. love teaching it and I could watch anyone do anything. I'm like, Oh man, I want to try it. So it was like, I could travel and do this thing I'm obsessed with. I'm just going to do it it's yeah, yeah. Like, as long as I can. It's well, close. and you run a stern room, dude, like just watching your camps. It's not, you're, you're, you're a good coach because you have the side that is able to, to get kids to pay attention to you. Right. But you mm-hmm. also have the side of you that says, if you're not paying attention, I'm going to stick my foot up your butt and you're going to pay the price for it. You know, so kids were paying, like, especially the one we went to, kids were paying attention after, I would say, maybe a good half hour, 45 minutes, because a couple of them were learning real quick. If you're not, you're going to pay yeah. the price, right? So, and, and those were kids. Now, I'm thinking in the in the long term here, because you're coaching at a high school, but I do mm-hmm. see you coaching at a college someday. You know what? Maybe it's Central Michigan where you're coaching at. You never know. Maybe I had I had my chance. You had your chance. Had. Yeah. Had. Explain yeah. had. How come you don't have yeah. the chance anymore? COVID. Okay. And honestly, um, I when I went to the U.S. Open, um, yeah. I went up and did a camp at University of Northern Colorado. Okay. Yep. And they wanted me to go and train there yep. and be an RTC coach and okay. basically set me up with this whole thing. Yeah. And uh, – I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't okay. do it. I wrestled at the U S open to kind of put the rest like this journey. My dad and I went on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I want to do this one more tournament with my dad. Just one more. Okay. Yeah. And I'm obviously at the youth wrestling club. So I went and did that. Well, obviously yeah. I did pretty good. I did pretty good. Yeah. I, yeah. I had three months of training and hadn't wrestled in nine years. And I was only down by three to Darian Cruz after the first period. Like, I'm in there. I'm in there. Right. Give me some training. Maybe I'm not so damn stupid. Like, right. I'm in there. But it was just fun. But yeah. I had, you know, they wanted me to come out there. And all I could think about was leaving my guys, like my boys, the youth kids. And I was like, there's no way. Like, yeah. I, this, not, this isn't me anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't want that that bad. Yeah. I don't. Right. Man. Okay. I really don't. Okay. Like what I, I I believe that what I have going here is going to work out. And I also believe that I told these kids, I'm going to see them through. I'm going to oh, see yeah. them through. That's awesome. I'm not leaving for nobody. And then a month later, I met my wife. So No, you're definitely not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> babe. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not going anywhere now. You're uh, stuck. No, no, so that's, no. so that's a, it's, and again, it's a, it's a story. I think of, resilience um you you were determined to accomplish things and it doesn't happen exactly the way we want it to i mean so many things happen i mean that last thing the the whole spinal fusion like that's that's crazy to me it, it is it is so to me knowing that you can still fulfill some type of energy need to be able to you know let it all out and still be able to be in wrestling with those kids and coaching those high school kids and giving them that type of feedback that you have the knowledge that you have is, is pretty cool. So you got to coach your first, you know, high school state champ last year, right. 
113. What was his name again? Dale Gant. All right. Shout yeah. out Dale Gant. So he was the re- reason, uh, part of the reason I stayed. So oh, yeah. Well, yeah. and again, why why when you again I can I can understand where you're coming from. Why would you want to walk away from something like that? That you're already got you already got that feeling for, right? Like you're yeah, I love him. I love him. Like right. There's something special him. here. Love his so, parents. Yeah. yeah. Well, and now here's the other thing too. It's like you have the ability to build a program, right? You have the ability to build something for to prove to people like, look, this is this what I was doing and what I was learning. This is exactly what kids need to be learning, right? Yeah. So what are your goals? You your solid team coming back. How many kids you got from last year you got coming back? Everyone but one, I think. Nice. Um, That's a lot always of injuries great. Right now, a okay. lot of injuries right now. But, yep. Um, we're setting a foundation for something. I yeah. think right now. So it are you trying? Way different. Are you trying to do kind of? Do, are you? Do you have your hands? Is there a youth program that that is involved with the high school? Do you guys have something that builds from from youth up? Are you trying to build something like that? Um, I feel like. I'll try to sum it up without butchering it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Catholic, the Christian schools and the Catholic parishes and stuff. The elementary school kids, when they're coming yeah. up, they can choose yeah. to go to. I think they can choose to go to West Catholic or Catholic Central. Okay, we're in the okay. same town. Two Catholic schools. Yeah. So when I try to get some youth things set up, they won't allow me to do that. I can't have a Catholic Central uh-huh. youth wrestling club when these kids might not even go there. Go there. It, it could be undue influence. It could. Yeah, yeah, right. Makes sense. And Makes so sense. So it's like we can go yeah. in there together, West sure. and Catholic. We can go in there as a group, both the coaches and I. Yeah. Can go together and do something together and pitch the sport together. Yeah. But I can't do my own thing. But I started up JRWA because I resigned from the staff in 2016. Yeah. And got a volunteer packet done and just ran a wrestling club out of the out of their school. There you go. So I was like, come on out. And I had no intention of taking over as head coach until I would say like a year or two. I like, I was kind of in the back of my mind. I was like, that would be cool. Yeah. It would line up pretty cool. Like if I could do that, but I was like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm never going to be ready. And then it happened. How did, how did that job approach you? How did, how did that, how did you get into the coaching staff? There was just cause you were moving back home and you're like, Hey guys, I'm going to um, be around. Can I help out? Nate Lemix's dad, Nate Lemix transferred from Lowell to yeah. Catholic Central, and I was okay. his main training partner. So okay. dad's like, you, you, we have some really good guys in here. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. really got to come check this out. Yeah. So I just showed up in 2012, 2013, and was like just a training partner. And mm-hmm. I was that guy for a lot of guys in there. But then, right. yeah, in 2016, right. I left, built the youth side up a little bit, had fun with yeah. it. Yeah. And then Dale was coming in, and then BJ retired. And then okay. they interviewed me and he was like, it's yours. If you want it, you've been here for nine years. If you yeah. want it, it's yours. That's awesome. Like, yeah. Like, give it to me. I'll give it a shot. Well, and you sound dedicated to it, man. And that's, that's the best part. And that's, again, that's why we talk to you guys like you, because you guys have a love for the sport. There's a passion for the sport, not only just for the sport now, also for the area that you're in. Like, I mean, you, you care about those kids and, and it, it's, you can see it just in you telling the story. So it's, it's interesting to me now that you're the head coach, you got the helm for two years. I'm going to watch and see where you guys wind up going a little bit, yeah, because man. I think you guys are going to blow up. It'd be cool. It would I be know. Cool. <laughs> I think you guys are going to blow up. I think you're going to, you're going to notice that, you know, if those guys aren't shifting over when they're kids from one school to your school now, just to let alone to play football and wrestle too, man, come on guys, go to the other side, go, go where, go where Kyle is. Go where Listen, Kyle is. no, 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 no. <laughs> Mitch SA could be listening. No, I, but, uh, I, um, I've had some odd conversations over the last like year. Mm-hmm. And like, I always tell people like, no matter what, like, yeah. Move, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. I agree. And, you know, you can still, I don't know. Like, I just want people to do make the best decision for themselves. But it's it's weird, dude. Yeah. Like, we're in this era where what high school you go to is a decision now that you have to make. Yeah. It's not something that it, it you're is. just going to go to high school where you went to elementary school. Like, you're just going to mm-hmm. go there. There's, there's, and I know there's, in our room. We're just this, in the club. We're just yeah. like, go to your school, man. Like, you can be a superstar there. Unless this, it's a this, really, really bad situation. It's like This man. far away from having signing days for high schools. 
I mean, really? well, NIL just got a, just got approved for Michigan this week. Really? So that you can do NIL for high school athletes and stuff now in oh. Michigan. So. Well, we got a, we got a, uh, some cousins of ours. Well, it's, it's my wife's sister, but uh, mm-hmm. Liam's cousins, they go to school in California and mm-hmm. they basically made an announcement of what high school, the Notre Dame high school that the, their son's going to, to be the quarterback there. <laughs> like made, made an announcement for it. It's, uh, it's I just don't think there's any stopping it, man. I mean, you no. won't. You won't. It Pretty it's going to destroy wrestling, I think, at some point. It's going to be it's, really You bad. know, we talked about a couple a couple different episodes, how, like, back in the day, how you'd see, like, maybe three guys in the transfer portal. Now it's, like, 20, 30 guys in the transfer yeah. portal because of the dollar signs, man. Now, can I blame them entirely? Hey, you, someone's waving dollars at me, and it's going to pay for my school, and I'm that age. It's just like when a, when a little kid doesn't want to, when their parents get divorced and the one kid doesn't want to stay with his parents because one one house is too hard. Of course, you're gonna pick the easy house, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to pick grandma's easy... house every yeah. time. Yeah, I'm not staying every at mom's time. house, or dad's <laughs> yeah. house. They're gonna spank me. So go to bed at eight. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. The, you get money flashing yeah. your face. You're gonna take the money, and so I, you know, parents are involved, and it's just it's craziness. It's the wild west in college sports right now. It's the wild west. Even high school sports is a little ridiculous sometimes. It's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. But my dream at Catholic is to just have to be able to have some kind of youth program going. Because yeah. my favorite part about coaching wrestling is coaching kids that don't know anything. Yeah, it's right. My right. It's my favorite. It's thing the best. Do. It's my favorite. You see that spark, man? Like I yeah. wake up just a little more or less tired in the mornings when I have some kids on my team that are like starting yep. to figure it out. I'm like, oh, that's this right. is fun. This it's is fun. exactly it's fun that's my favorite win, part. But... You see the growth, you see the progress. Yeah. You, like you said, you see that light switch kind of turn on. You're making a difference, and you know you are totally you see it. big time. You know? And that's and to me, that's the biggest part of youth sports is the progress. Like as a parent, you get so buried in the in the my kid's got to be better than this one. I mean, because it's your kid, mm-hmm. right? But like when you can kind of step back if you can, if you can step back for that nanosecond and realize that you know. Shit, this is pretty cool. What they're doing is it's it's pretty and they're learning it. Look how they're taking it in, kind of thing. But you know, a lot <laughs> of us get we do get lost in the in the in the winning and losing. But uh I think what you're doing is great, dude. You know, having you uh Thanks, and meeting you at that camp, I think it's it's changed a lot. You like you helped Liam out at Super 32 that one year and you know, kind of my guy, you know, dude. From talking to him a little bit at those camps, and he's he's been excited about being around you and we got to get over to Michigan because I know that there's a couple trips we want to make over there and, and, and be able to train with you, but I think you're doing great. I, I think what you're going to do at the high school is going to be awesome, man. And you, we've had you on for what? Oh, hour and a half now, a little, little over an hour and a half. So <laughs> there, there, we, we want to check in with you. Everybody we talked to, we're going to, I mean, we're going to do multiple episodes. We're on your 78. We're going to do 5,000. So we're right. going to, I'll be back. We're going to get you back on. We want to find out what's going on. I, I'm going to check in. Hopefully I could check in with you by the end of the year and see what, you know, what kind of progress with the team, but uh, what, how, what are the guys? What's the lineup of guys? Are they sophomores, juniors? Are they, what are they? We have two seniors two. this year. Um, yeah. And the whole team. Oh my God. Yeah. Mostly freshmen, sophomores and a handful of juniors. All right. So, All right. So it's going to be, this, and this is group be of sweet. freshmen this year. Yeah. Pretty tight. Nice. Good. Good. I'm, we're having well, fun, man. <laughs> we are. Yeah. I'll, I'll say. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you go, man. Uh, I, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit after we're done here, but right. I'm gonna wind up hitting the button. They'll mute us. We're gonna let them watch the cool logo for a second with the with the <laughs> with the ads on there. But um, we appreciate everybody listening, watching this. Uh, the audio version will be out this week. Um, uh, but we've been talking to Kyle Waldo, man. Uh, he's Grand Rapids uh, Catholic Central co- head coach. It's been awesome talking to you. The guy is going to make a huge difference over there. So watch out for those guys. Uh, But we're going to let you guys go, man. Peace. Thank you.
episodes are brought to you by Appleton Tattoo, located at 117 South Appleton Street in Appleton, Wisconsin, right off the main drag on College Avenue. You can't miss them. I've had some work done. Uh, I have a Celtic cross that covers my back that was done by Jason. We're not done yet. Uh, Jason Winans and crew, uh, the artists that he have there, those guys are the best in the Fox Valley. Um, they are definitely one to go to. If it's something that you've just been kind of throwing around, they'll make you feel comfortable. It's a very clean environment, very nice crew, um, and very willing to get done whatever you need done when you need it done. Um, you can message them on Facebook. I know they're on Facebook. You can give them a call uh, at 920-604-8289 and get in touch with Jason Winans and crew at Appleton Tattoo, located again in Appleton, Wisconsin at 117 South Appleton Street, right in Appleton. Very flexible hours, great crew, clean environment again. Uh, I would not send you anywhere else except for these guys. Appleton Tattoo.